so this is the uh, uh, session meant for um, MA in journalism and mass communication online program uh, counseling session for E Vidya Bharti uh, meant for African students, right? And uh, we are uh, doing this uh, exercise continuously for the many weeks right and uh, as part of this exercise we are uh, covering the block one today and uh, we will try to understand the, the the basic concept behind new media and society okay and Primarily, uh, okay, there are about uh, uh, four uh, main component in the block one. Before that, let me introduce the the broader concept of uh, the block one of MJM twenty eight. Yeah, just keep your uh, audio mute, but otherwise, uh, the sound will get disturbed. OK, and whenever you want to ask questions, just uh, interrupt me. I'll stop my presentation. I'll come back to you and then I'll give my uh, response to you. Right. And otherwise, I'll just uh, continue the my presentation. And it's being recorded, so it can be watched later uh, for the students of uh, MHMC online program. Remember that uh, there are two components in the block one. One is uh, new media, another one is society. Let us understand the basic term, the media. Uh, media is a term, uh, since you have uh, gone through many uh, components, concepts of uh, uh, concepts or courses related to media the last one year. And even the, this year also, you will understand many more uh, dimensions of media. Media uh, primarily a uh, vehicle that carries information from one place to another place. For example, here from IGNU, I'm sitting in Delhi and you people are uh, joining this Google Meet from across the different uh, countries from Africa. So the Google Meet is, we can call is a medium, right? And uh, uh, that's a vehicle, okay? That's a platform through which the human beings used to communicate each other. Communication is probably, probably is not only for human beings, but it's meant for uh, all the animal kingdom. It's uh, uh, being practiced by many various uh, sections of animal kingdom through various modes. As a human beings, we are using the language. A language which is common to both the participants, like you and me, we are uh, con conversant and understandable uh, through English. That's why we're using the medium English. And uh, understand that uh, uh, the word medium, media, right? It's a vehicle. So what do we mean by new media? We know media. Media, for example, newspapers, television, radio, or film are called uh, medium or media collectively, print media, electronic media, online media, and all. So the, I give the, exam, uh, exa the explanation definition for media. And the media, the term media is quite a uh, old one, but the media and society, the large society by social, uh, society wide communication, it's uh, quite uh, old for the last uh, 400 years, approximately. Started with the books in uh, 300, 400 years back. In the last 100 years or more, we have witnessed a tremendous changes in the technological platform in terms of. Uh, television, radio, photography, and uh, film, uh, color television, uh, live television, live broadcast. So technology uh, basically transformed the, the way we are communicating in the society-wide communication. For example, in the national television channel, they can cater to the nook and corner of the particular country. 
our international channels like uh, BBC or CNN or uh, Raya, they can cover a uh, majority of the global footprint through satellites. Live broadcast can be done. So these are the, the traditional uh, uh, mainstream media. But the, we are in this course, we are going to discuss about uh, new media. What do we mean by new media? The anything uh, that uh, is a platform, communication platform, that is a, uh, based on the technological platform and that is capable of carrying out communication uh, from one place to many place. And uh, that uh, we can call it as a new media. Uh, probably this is uh, just a 20, 30 years old uh, platform. Uh, probably uh, we can say 1991, 92 is the one, uh, the, the, the period in which the, uh, the worldwide web got uh, introduced into the world. Of course, the network, computer network is not a new concept and uh, it's being practiced, it's being implemented, it's being used by many universities, labs or many organizations more than uh, 70 years back, 60s and all. They started using the, the network, computer networks, connecting different computers from 60s onwards. Uh, see, con connecting, physically connecting one or two system, a collection of 10 computers, that's, they call this a computer network and they transmit the files, information from between each other. Right. But uh, the problem here, and they can't go to the mass level. And from one university, another university, they can connect, but provided they have direct link, telephone link and all. And uh, uh, there's uh, Tim Burnley, Burnley that uh, the scientist, uh, he introduced a WWW, that's a worldwide web, in 1991. That's a major uh, change in the uh, human communication history we can say that uh, the online platform they gave uh, gave uh, opportunity for individuals institutions governments and organizations to share the information to the vast number of people right so that is the uh, the historical dimension but the last uh, 20 30 years we have witnessed uh, considerable changes in the technological platform. Uh, considerable changes in the sense in 90s, early 90s, the late 90s, or up to mid 90s, we can call uh, those uh, web, web platform as a web 1.0. And later, uh, 2006, 7 onwards, we got a web 2.0. So what do we mean by Web 1 and Web 2, Web 1.0 and Web 2.0? Before understanding this Web 1.0 or 2.0, you need to understand the differences between newspapers, television, radio, film in one side and in new media on the other side. The major uh, difference here, uh, I can give a characteristics of new media, then you can correlate with the other platform. Uh, for example, the newspaper, if you want to read a newspaper, a newspaper you have to subscribe. I'm talking about a physically printed newspapers. It's printed and you to print the newspaper, you need a material like a papers, newsprint required, machine is required, printed, and it's being circulated to the, all the houses. So we are uh, subscribed for newspapers in the physical form or magazines, printed form or books, printed in a newsprint, hard copy. That is a one form of newspapers, okay? If it's a radio, I'm not talking about online, I'm talking about the radio, pure radio, some years back. If it's a, a radio broadcast is available, and uh, if you want to listen to the radio, we need a receiver. So radio receiver is a one instrument. And uh, radio station, they broadcast a, a kind of program, and uh, many uh, program they'll broadcast. And as a receiver, as an individual, I should have uh, a receiver, a radio set. And that receives either a FM signal or AM signal or short wave or medium wave. They have to receive the uh, signal that decodes 
and our audio music uh, program or the interview whatever the program that is being audible to us similar to television uh, television also similar the television uh, channels stations organizations they make uh, they produce programs packages either entertainment packages or news packages or other forms of programs uh, then they'll broadcast through satellite and uh, through multiple technological platform, either local transmitter or through DTH, direct to home or OTT. Uh, but they'll broadcast certain uh, programs. But to, to receive those uh, programs, we need a TV set, right? We need a monitor, TV monitor, and that is being properly connected to the either uh, this antenna or to uh, whatever the antenna we have or through internet to receive the platform through DTH or OTT. Right, if it is a film, uh, you have to go to theaters, cinema halls, and you have to buy tickets, and you have to sit in the hall along with the groups, you have to watch the movie. So if the mainstream media, if you look at the mainstream media, you have, uh, you need to have a separate uh, receiver or television set or newsprint or cinema theater, like uh, you have, need to have a facility instruments, gadgets to consume the mainstream media's content, to participate in the content. Whereas in the new media, online or digital, you can see a kind of convergence. A newspaper, the printed copy can be accessed in the PDF format. You can access in a laptop or a mobile or a computer. Okay, you don't need a, you need a separate instrument for that. In the same computer where we are accessing right now the Google Meet, the same system, you can read a newspaper of your choice, e-newspaper, online newspapers. Similarly, you can listen to the internet radio or radio broadcasted by many organizations are available live or recorded uh, through various streaming uh, options or through their website. For that, we don't need a separate receiver. Your laptop or mobile is sufficient for that. So newspaper can read it, radio can listen to that. Similarly, the, the news channels, uh, prime time television broadcast, if you want to listen, you can go to their uh, channel's website or that can be available on YouTube or maybe available through some other streaming platform. Again, we are watching the same television uh, uh, streaming through the same computer, same mobile. Film, we can watch it. And uh, uh, this is the difference between, between the mainstream media and new media. Here, everything is being converged and everything can be accessed in one platform. We don't need a separate receiver. So all these materials are compatible and it's digital and it can be uh, broadcasted, multiplied, copied, uh, transmitted in any number of times and you won't lose any content. But in a traditional mainstream media, whatever the uh, reproduction, right, means materials are reproduced again and again then you tend to lose the data. For example, I'll give one simple example. You take a printout of any uh, newspaper story, you photocopy that, Gerard said, photocopy. And uh, original is being photocopied and you got a photocopy. And leave the original and uh, take the original photo, first photocopy and put it in the Gerard's machine and take the second photograph, photo, second uh, photocopy. Like that, the cycle continue for the next 10, 15 times because uh, whenever second photoco photocopy come, then you take with that, you take third one, then discard the second one with a third photocopy and take another copy. If you go on, go on 10, 15 times, the 15th time, you may have very gray uh, output. You may not be able to read the text. The original uh, newspaper, when we took a photocopy, the first photocopy, it's a black and white, and it retained all the characters, all the materials, with a little bit of disturbances. But if you multiple times, if you photocopy the, the duplicated one, every time uh, the new generation, they lose the information. Tenth time or fifteenth time, you may not have any characters in your paper when you photocopy that. Right. So in the physical form, whenever you duplicate that, you tend to lose data. And now uh, with the pen drive, you can copy a music uh, file or your word file or your document from one system 
and same pen drive can be given to multiple people they can copy and those copied content can be put in another pen drive and transmitted to various level through email or whatsapp whatever thing you transmit 100 times 200 times and your music file won't lose not even one percent of your one uh, percent of that content there won't be any loss of transmit loss of data that is a special uh, <coughs> platform the reason is in the online platform all the contents are saved in a binary numbers binary numbers means the one and zero okay when the content uh, news when we are seeing a e-newspaper e the printed copies are converted into digital format when the digital formation happens every every information of the newspaper photograph or text a character headline everything stored in a computer readable uh, binary numbers so the same numbers are retained and it reproduce as it is so there is no scope of loss of information in the digital platform so understand the 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 physical form of mainstream media and new media what are the main characteristics i mentioned that this convergence we don't need a uh, separate receiver this is a one aspect of accessing uh, mainstream media second uh, uh, characteristics we can compare it with the mainstream media and new media is the in terms of communication process in terms of communication process means uh, for example uh, the newspapers television or radio are managed by uh, many news organizations news organizations are um, uh, controlled by professionals the different hierarchy of editors and uh, sub editors reporters news editor and even community radio or radio station or television wherever you go you can see the different levels of uh, uh, people involved in that and uh, they have a set of guidelines editorial guidelines editorial values and editorial uh, uh, ethical guidelines and everything that and other than that constitutional uh, framework any news organization or any media organization they are supposed to work in any particular country uh, following two uh, two set of rules one is a voluntary uh, guidelines of ethical perspective another one is a legal uh, framework with if they uh, violate this part they uh, tend to face some problem okay normally uh, media organizations they hesitate to violate any ethical norms or legal uh, framework reason is legal framework if you violate that then automatically the regulatory body might uh, control your operation so you tend to lose your business if it's an ethical guideline uh, blatantly openly they can't violate uh, the journalistic practices or media practices the consequences are there audience are very sensitive and the majority of the audience wanted objective uh, true and uh, verified information when the newspapers are identified that they deliberately manipulating the uh, materials or they're giving misinformation or uh, disinformation then automatically they lose the credibility if they lose the credibility automatically they lose the audience if they lose the audience automatically the business goes down so the main big media organizations they'll hesitate to lose uh, the credibility because their whole media operations based on the loyalty and credibility right so that is uh, being that kind of credibility how can we maintain that credibility can be maintained if we maintain the quality media content i told you right that the media operations either the producers production level or in the news operation and they these are two set of people or uh, they are the one create the media content they'll take care a lot about that one so uh, the news or me entertainment or any package are produced under controlled settings control the same the only professionals with the certain guidelines with certain agenda with certain purpose they'll create the content they'll package it in, in a very better attractive manner then they'll broadcast or disseminate to the society okay and uh, uh, 
main the purpose is because i uh, we, you may know better the media is a business majority of the time you will find media in a private hand private entity private entity means they uh, running this media from the business point of view because they have to make a money uh, they have to take a profit without profit they can't sustain that and if they want profit then automatically they have to uh, have a, a good number of audience because uh, remember that the media is a mediator and uh, through their media content they'll bring the audience once they got a audience they sell this audience to the corporates they are the ones sponsoring advertisement remember that 90% of uh, any media organizations survival based on the advertisements remaining 10%, 10% is re- relying on uh, the subscriptions or some other uh, financial sources largely it's advertisement based i'm talking about large uh, set of media organizations and there are other alternative platform a community radio stations alternative platform in online or offline and all their model of operations is completely different because their size is very small and they might operate in an individual capacity or group level or a different level that we will discuss it in a subsequent classes but i am talking about the major newspapers major newspapers new television channels and online platform and all right so the packages news content are produced by professionals with a control environment with certain guidelines with certain purposes right they'll send it to the society because the business because they have to make the profit but if you come to online i'm talking about the first time we were comparing the physical form now we are comparing the communication point of view the traditional media are more uh, credible more professional and business oriented and they'll make a profit out of that and they don't want to lose the business for the sake of uh, some benefit of attaching with the corporates and everything so they'll try to be more uh, genuine this is what uh, we are expecting them to fun- function and uh, this is what the normal mainstream media when it comes to the online platform here institutions are playing a role a uh, same television set they may have a uh, online uh, website same newspaper they may have uh, uh, news online newspapers same production house t- film production house they may have a uh, channel in the youtube or some other streaming website they'll uh, rent out their uh, films right and uh, this is also happening in online and you and me as an individual we can do all this work i can have a facebook account or insta account or a youtube account i can broadcast or i can disseminate information same way you can do that whatever language whatever the content we both of us have a rights to do that right and uh, individuals with the adequate knowledge as well as resources like a computer and net connection a mobile and net connection you can be a media professional running a own channel own newspaper own media outlet there are plenty of examples are available on online platform individual entrepreneurs they are surviving in online platform with the minimal resources they making a maximum uh, effort and maximum reach that you will find plenty of examples in online platform this is one set of individuals and this institutions and there are lot you know that in the, the global context uh 50 to 55% of the populations are connected and the, the the variation may be bigger if you go to developed countries the internet penetration is close to 95% 97% if it is a developing countries the variation differs uh the internet penetration may be 50% or 60% or 70% and mobile but in contrasting mobile is more uh, prevalent more uh, pre- present more Uh, availability of mobile is more in the many developing countries the reason is why the developed countries are having a better connectivity or uh, uh, whereas in developing countries are having less uh, connectivity the reason is this is not a new uh, phenomena uh, from the ages they are better connectivity in terms of telephone connectivity if you look at the early generation of uh, communication technology now we are con- talking about internet whereas if you take a 30 40 years back we had a telephone wire con- connections 
right and uh, that point of time also and developed countries they used to have better uh, uh, telephone presence more number of people used to have a telephone reason is the infrastructure for communication is very strong in developing countries and whereas in the developing countries in communication infrastructure is very poor right this is the one point and uh, when the, we got internet all the developed countries already they have a very good communication network earlier they may have a coaxial cable the copper wire so in a short span of time they shifted from copper wire to optic fiber okay optic fiber is uh, capable to carry digital content and to long distance and without losing any uh, loss of data right and uh, we, since we have they have the infrastructure already they have infrastructure they shifted the uh, mode from copper to optic fiber so this, in the shortest span of time they were they are were able to reach large number of people with a good internet connection but in the developing countries already they have some issues with the, the communication network and uh, they are, have to uh, put the new infrastructure for uh, optic fiber so it's quite very expensive and time consuming and not affordable so what is the solution for that the solution is wireless uh, so no need to lay the optic fiber you go for transmitters and mobile transmitters through the mobile transmitter you transmit the content uh, so double benefit one you can have more mobile connectivity as well as you can have a more wireless internet connection so that is one of the reason why the broadband uh, penetration is higher in developed countries broadband connectivity is lesser in uh, developing countries the mobile connectivities are very high in developed countries mobile connectivity is very high in developing countries also the reason this is a reason for that and uh, the why the mobile is more for example if you take a example of india uh, in indian example the mobile connectivity is close to 94% the internet connectivity is close to 65% so you can understand the difference there is another term we used to uh, refer that is called delhi density delhi density is number of uh, mobile connections or number of broadband connections available in one particular country okay the delhi density varies from urban to rural many developing countries the delhi density is higher in the rural areas lower uh, higher in uh, urban areas lower in rural areas uh, again this is the same uh, reason the communication infrastructure is better in urban context and uh, poor in a rural context and there is a lot of other than that there are a lot of other issues economic factors and uh, the individual uh, user uh, affordability education skill and competency through which to use a mobile to, to use the internet for your personal or professional purposes okay so this is the uh, scenario i was comparing the mainstream media with the uh, uh, online platform so i was talking about that uh, the uh, institutions in mainstream media they used to control the uh, media outlet media uh, outcome media programs media content whereas in the online platform i was talking about individuals and institutions everybody is available we are talking about the percentage of internet connection so you can calculate that sorry you can calculate that the millions and billions of people are available in the online platform and uh, remember that this online platform is not confined to one geographical location if you post some message from africa that can be accessed from america or uh, south america or in uh, asia or any part of uh, globe right this is a global medium right and uh, uh, we used to say that communication should be very simple very objective and uh, should not dilute the any it should ha- carry all the information properly verified institution can do that a national uh, daily can do that they'll verify the information they'll broadcast that but individuals individuals like you and me we have different uh, 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 frame of functionality and we operate in different levels 
and many times many individuals may may operate on anonymous level in the online platform in insta or in facebook or x twitter twitter you will find plenty of anonymous uh, user anonymous user means they are concealing the profile so they can put any information your yeah, right information can be twisted and they'll put in a, a, a misinformation or disinformation or fake news so this is the biggest challenge in online platform right so this is the uh, background about the internet as a medium and uh, i was co comparing the characteristics of the mainstream media and the online platform and uh, the challenges of uh, online platform and uh, another third level i can uh, give you one uh, uh, information about the new media uh, that's about uh, the uh, the level of communication before that, uh, let me stop for a while. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me because I don't want to keep it continuously talking about uh, uh, subject. Right? If you have any questions, briefly to clarify certain doubts about whatever I presented, uh, because continuously, if I am presenting also, I can go on uh, talking about that, but if. We just uh, I thought of okay, it two three minutes. I'll speak. Yes, uh, go on way. Yes, uh, maybe will you just uh, come again on the point that the, you were uh, explaining um, in terms of uh, uh, fiber fiber issues? You were talking about the developing okay. countries and the, those uh, which are underdeveloped. Yeah. On that one, uh, would you yeah. just maybe briefly come again? Right. See, uh, 40 years back, 30, 40 years back, uh, uh, I'm talking about 1980s and 90s, last century. Their point of time, that point of time, telephone uh, via telephone connections. We used to have only telephone connections. Telephone connections are connected through wire. Okay. Uh, for example, from your home to your office, or office to your university or other government office they might have uh, tele lots of telephone numbers telephone connections okay the connections all the telephone connections are through wire only that point of time the old technology they use a copper wire copper wire means that's a wire that's a kind of uh, golden color uh, material that carries the signals from one point to another point okay and uh, that is a little slow and they tend to lose uh, the connections uh, earlier, I don't know, but you experienced or not in, in that point of time. If somebody calling from remote locations, we used to uh, get the audio in a very, very, uh, uh, very mild, not not much audible, because the more the distance, the automatic quality goes down. So that's the characteristics of copper uh, coax, co co copper wire, coaxial wire. We can call it like that. Uh, but when the internet came, uh, 1991 onwards, the computers can't handle the copper wire. Uh, but I'm not sure whether you are familiar with that earlier, earlier uh, initial period of internet connections. Uh, you might have uh, seen some videos in the YouTube. That point of time, we had to call a telephone exchange. Means from computer, uh, uh, they provide the internet provider, they used to give numbers. Okay, like it, mobile numbers. For internet connection, they used to give a number. From computer, we used to have a modem. Okay, modem. And I'm talking about 95, 96, 98 and all. The computer is connected to the modem and the modem is connected to the telephone. So, the earliest form of tele internet connection is telephone only. So, that uh, point of time, uh, getting a one uh, picture, uh, one photograph of uh, 400 KB. Okay, 1 MB, I think you people can understand the 1 MB, 1 GB and terabyte and all, right? I'm talking about one photograph is less than 1 MB, half of 0 0.05 MB, you can say that. 95, uh, 1995, when computer is connected to the modem, modem is connected to telephone. If I want to send one picture from my system to your system, right, that point of time, it takes 35 minutes to send one picture. Now, just see that I am sitting in Delhi, you are in Africa, we are communicating through live video. 
you people are not switched on the video but you can see my video i'm sharing my screen you are watching the uh, one pdf file so compare that 1995 to send one a picture of less than 1 mb takes 35 minutes it takes lot of time from com- converting from here to another another level okay and uh, uh, see here somebody is saying that i'm traveling uh, connection problem again this is a problem that the technology doesn't support a, get a recording is happening i'm recording this one and uh, you'll get it later all right so uh, that that was a copper we are mentioning 1995 the copper wire then over the period run the technology uh, transformed the communication from copper wire to optic fiber optic fiber is a the transparent wire that capable to carry 100 time 1000 times multiple millions of times better than copper wire so now we are communicating now remember remember that this google meet meeting is happening through majority of through coax optic fiber optic fiber is being laid out across the globe and every continent is connected that is capable to carry multiple uh, the uh, data sets 1995 one image from one system to another system it takes 35 minutes but now a live video lecture from delhi to africa is going live and if my if you take the total value of my transmission how much i am transmitting to you might be every minute and many number of gbs okay maybe 1000 gb or 2000 gb is or transmitted from my system to your system it's happening instantaneously without not able to realize that that much technology we got that right and uh, but uh, this is possible so might be you might be in a better locations in your country i might be in a better location in my country we have the better connectivity we are able to access that if you are traveling outside the urban city if i am traveling outside my uh, urban city my quality of connections got, goes down if my quality of uh, connection goes down then i may not be able to listen for example now they recently one person left the meeting he was telling he was traveling when you are traveling outside your uh, location the the quality of internet connection signals are goes down when the signal goes down you may not be able to listen to my video you may not be able to listen to my audio properly okay so this is the situation of even now today and even though the same country and uh, different locations gives different signals based on the signal strength we can uh, connect each other or we may not be able to connect each other so that makes a difference based on the uh, the infrastructure okay and i was referring a coax cable and ofc because developed countries for many years because since they have much more resources so they able to connect telephone to every home that point of time 30 40 years back so they have network it may be copper wire but they have network when 95 2000 2005 we we got a optic fiber so they have to simply they have to take out the copper wire they have to put the optic fiber okay so that's what they did developed countries but in developing countries what happened right they don't have proper network network they have the network is available in urban area only so they have to put the new cable means they have put they need lot of human power man power as well as resources to buy a cable buy a, to buy a land then put the cable and to not only the cable you need a appropriate machines equipments to connect to all that part it takes a lot of time you need a lot of money already the developing countries why we are calling developing countries because they are still growing and their resources are not matchable with the developed countries so automatically our te- technology might be available but we may not be able to distribute to the entire society equally okay so this is a different all uh, debate altogether um, but uh, sim- i'm sim- just simplifying the historically how a developing country developed countries got a lead in giving a broadband connection to every home and why developing countries are not able to give broadband connection to every home and uh, very simply if you go to uh, google just type that 
the average internet speed in Europe and America, average uh, internet speed in Asia or Africa. Just find the answer in Google. You can find interesting differences. In uh, developed countries, the internet average internet speed must be running in GBs, right? Where one uh, film, 2.5 hours of film of 800 GB uh, film can be transmitted in 10, 15 minutes time. But for the same film, if I want to download or transmit, I might take more than 15 minutes, maybe more than one hour, maybe more than two hours. Right, very simple. You can check the, the differences in terms of internet connectivity. That's the difference. For example, if you have a very small tube, okay, very small tube, that how much water can carry? Very limited water can carry. For example, if you have very big uh, tube or very big tube that can carry large number of water, that's called bandwidth, broadband or bandwidth according. In our developed countries, they have very big. Uh, you can just I'm comparing internet with a water tube. They have very big uh, tube, so a lot of data they can transmit. Whereas the developing countries, they have a small tube. Small tube means they, they can carry a very small number, small quantity of water at a given point of time. So you can find the difference between a very big tube and a small tube. How much quantum of water can be transmitted in given point of time? That is the difference between developed countries and developing countries that's the difference between bandwidth and broadband size of these two countries okay so i literally we this is these are the points we were discussing in the block one right the internet uh, uh, as a medium if you uh, uh, look at the first chapter i guess uh, gorham i have explained to your question okay if you have not satisfied tell me but i can repeat that so the first plan made the, the first unit talking about cyberspace functional uh, dimension of cyberspace characteristics of cyberspace and uh, different forms of computer media communication there are uh, in personal interpersonal hyperpersonal then virtual communities and uh, the cyberspace is basically it's a it's not a technological platform it's not a satellite, it's not your monitor, it's not your mobile handset, but it's a, it's a in, it's invisible space. Uh, for example, uh, whatever we are discussing, it's happening through multiple uh, layers of technology, from my laptop to nearest uh, internet service provider to uh, main uh, uh, optic fiber link and it may transmit it to Africa and we, then they, through your internet service provider to your computer, you're listening to that. See, look, look at that. From my end to your end, it's quite seamlessly we are communicating, and but it's multiple layers are there. These layers of technology provides a space for me, for you to transact between us. You're asking question, I'm clarifying that, right? So that space is called cyberspace. Cyberspace is intangible space in which human being can exchange feelings, information, opinion, expressions, and whatever uh, they have, want to share that. So that's called cyberspace. Okay. So in this unit, I have, have explained it in detail about characteristics of cyberspace and everything that. Another important point in the first unit is computer mediated communication. You might be surprised saying that why do we need to use the word computer mediated communication? Because now computer is no longer the prominent uh, mode of gadgets. We have mobile, we have tablet, we have laptop and all. But this is the historical term rooted from 1960s itself. When I was uh, referring earlier the history of the evolution of the internet, in the, in the internet network, the computer network got uh, established in 1962 itself, 62, early 60s and all, right? That point of time, uh, uh, they were connecting the computers. So from that point of time, this term is attached and still it's being used. And uh, here there are classifications. Uh, classification in the sense, uh, 
the computer uh, in, uh, through a cyberspace, you can transmit, for example, you through your mobile, you can talk to your family member, or I can talk to my student one to one, and uh, not only the mobile uh, through WhatsApp or uh, through email. Okay, and everything is an extension of cyberspace through online or computer. So I can, as an individual, or as a, you, or you as an individual, you can connect with another individual. That's possible online. This is like a telephone. This is called one-to-one -one communication. Secondly, one person can communicate to many people. For example, we have the Telegram group for the African students. There are about 40, 45 people or students are there. As a teacher, I can post a message. So today we are having a counseling session. So that three, four people joined today. So there is another form of communication in the online platform. One person can communicate to the large people. This I'm giving one small example. For example, if you take a celebrity, uh, Barack Obama is a former president of US, America, US and he's having a, a strong presence in social media. One person. But if you look at his uh, followers in X, uh, Twitter, there are millions of people are following. So he may not be able to connect with all the millions. Correct means interaction, not possible. But he can post messages frequently. So he is communicating to the millions of people in one single go. So one person can communicate to the many. So I was giving an example of one to one. And another one is example is one to many. The third example is many to many if you go to uh, twitter earlier twitter now is x if you go there are a lot of hashtags hashtags uh, for example it's uh, uh, the current trend uh, um, maybe israel attack israel war if you say that you will find the hashtag in the hashtag what's happened that it's one person's not communicating one person's not receiving uh, one group is not communicating one country of people not receiving that. Many people talking about one issue, many people are consuming that. So th there is a, that also possible in online. Many people can communicate with many people, but not in the real time. Maybe in a, the, I post a message, you read it after five minutes, you respond to that message after 10 minutes, I read it after one hour, I'll respond to you after two hours. The hashtag is a continuous process. So uh, that is the beauty of online cyberspace. Uh, we can have a one to one, we can have one to many, we can have many to many. Okay, so this is the dimensions of computer mediated communication. Other than that, there is one more interesting dimension of uh, computer mediated communication. I can send a message to my family member through uh, computer, email. I can send a mail to uh, all the students of uh, uh, MHMC OIL, all the students. So same system, I can use it for my personal purpose. Same system, I can use it for my professional purposes. See the differences. That's possible. Okay. Same Barack Obama can use uh, his Twitter account to communicate to entire uh, followers. And he, through DM, that's why there's a concept called DM, direct messages. Uh, that can be done through his, one of his friends. One is his follower. That's also possible. Right. That uh, facility is only available in an online platform. You can't do it in a television. You can't do it in a newspaper. You can't do it in other platform. Only internet provides one-to-one, -one, one to many many-to-many. But the same platform can be used for personal purposes and professional purposes. Okay? And uh, then there are other categories of computer media. Impersonal, interpersonal, hyperpersonal. You might have learned about different kinds of communication in the earlier year about uh, inter intrapersonal, interpersonal, group, mass, and everything. Like the impersonal means we are communicating to ourselves. Uh, interestingly, WhatsApp, they are providing a facility called you can store your message myself, right? And you can communicate to yourself. I used to do, for example, reminders. I used to save some messages or some files required. It's like it's a storage space, reminder, or something like that. So it's like an intrapersonal. The computer or mobile or gadgets while uh, provides a facility for me to communicate to my personal, my personal level, right? 
and interpersonal so this is a ba basically one to one only and hyperpersonal this is a hyperpersonal uh, computer media can it's quite interesting one for example uh, when you have a profile image profile image of your uh, mobile uh, whatsapp profile or uh, facebook profile or insta profile or x profile when you pick, put the picture you will think twice thrice 10 times 15 times 20 times before finalizing your picture right so that is uh, uh, what the human behavior in the online platform where they'll try to project in a very positive manner they'll try try to take a lot of effort to project okay for example you take my video and uh, here the background you can't see the background so i've created a virtual uh, virtual background so i want to create a kind of atmosphere where so i look I, i'm presenting my class in a better manner right so this is called hyperpersonal hyperpersonal means the individuals takes a lot of effort in projecting themselves in a very positive manner okay so these are the, some of the concepts behind the uh, unit 1 internet as a medium of communication okay and we will take a very short break of 3 to 5 minutes then we'll come back i'll cover the remaining unit
Right. So uh, we will move on to the uh, second uh, block, second unit of uh, block one. And uh, that's about uh, uh, digital media and society. Here, uh, some of the points already I have discussed with you uh, about understanding digital media, the characteristics I compared with the traditional media and the digital media, the evolution also I explained to you. Then the medium specific trends, for example, uh, how web 1.0, okay, I forgot to give the uh, differences between web 1.0 and web 2.0. 1991 to 2005 or 2006, we can say that's a period of Web 1.0. Web 2.0, is we can say that 2. Uh, 2006 onwards. Why 2006 onwards? The social media started gaining a popularity in 2005, 4, 5, 6 onwards. Earlier, we used to have MySpace, Orkut, and then Facebook came, then Twitter came, then YouTube came, then you can find plenty of uh, uh, social media platform the simplest difference you can understand easily when uh, you open a bbc news website and uh, they have uh, stories in the front page you can find the stories and if you click one story it goes to the individual page you can read the story you can't edit the story you can't do anything except reading the story and you can take a picture you can download and at the same you can share it you can comment about that only limited interaction is possible whereas in a, if you go to wikipedia if you open a new there also they have a lot of articles you open the wikipedia article what do you want to do you can do it for example i want to change the headline you can change the headline you want to add new pictures you can add the picture you want to rearrange the paragraph you can do that you want to change the tone of the article you can, Whatever you want to do it with that article is possible. Now tell me the difference between the BBC article, we have a limited scope of interaction in terms of customizing. In a Wikipedia, we have full freedom to do that. That is the difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. Web 1.0 is a static era, static online cyberspace, we can say that. Web 2.0 is a more interactive and dynamic static dynamic okay so the social media became more popular because of web 2.0 where the individuals can do a lot of work uh, you can post a message you can post pictures you can stream it you can have a newspaper you can have a radio station you can have you can invite others to contribute so collaboration dynamic customization everything is possible in web 2.0 so this is a two one and uh, this is a medium specific trend, so you can understand that. Over the period of time, when the technology grows, automatically the uh, facilities are going much better. If you, you there is an online, there is a uh, website called archive.org. If you go to archive.org, you can go back to the, uh, time, it's a, like a time machine. You can access some of the websites of 2001, 1995 or 2004, 2005. Uh, 2015 or uh, 2020. Historically, if you look at the newspaper or online uh, platform the change, uh, the evolution of online platform got changed. In 95, 94, 97, 98, majority, 95%, 95% of the online content is text-based. English, text-based, simple uh, text. So it, it's uh, because it's easy to carry. I told you, right? One picture takes 35 minutes to transfer one system. So, so they don't want to uh, bombard the web page with so many pictures. If so many pictures means it takes one hour, two hours to open the page. You, I don't think so. But yeah, sure, yeah, a user can stay for two hours to spending uh, time to just to listen, watching a blank screen to open a window. That's not possible. So because the online user, they want to uh, see the page at the earliest. So mostly text-based, and then when uh, technology went to a little higher, like a 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and you know, what the mobile we are talking about, right? And more technology started coming. We started getting more pictures, videos, live streaming, and now we have much more artificial intelligence, augmented reality. And there's so many things are happening here, right? 
And this is a medium specific trends in the uh, second unit, uh, talking about the evolution of uh, uh, media landscape. One point I would like to say the language in online media. I, I was referring English, right? In 95, the 98, 99, and all the 95 percent of the content was in English. Slowly, other uh, languages of uh, Spanish, French, Japanese, German language started coming because it's a big market, developed countries, and uh, Windows or computer can be customized in local languages. The people can buy that computer at that point of time. So they started giving uh, uh, content also in, the, in that languages. Uh, but uh, the languages from uh, South, Global South, for example, Africa, Asia, uh, Middle East, and uh, uh, South America, that languages are lagging behind even now. Uh, now we have many facilities of creating content in regional languages. Uh, I did a study some time back, a couple of years back. I was trying to understand the Indian languages in the online space. Uh, the Indian languages, because the population is very high here, and India is the second largest country in terms of internet users after China. And uh, But Indian languages presence is very limited. There are a lot of reasons for that. One, the gadgets. Many people may not be able to type it in the regional languages. Or uh, many people are unable to uh, uh, read the content online because the affluent people only can have a computer or internet connections. So they are automatically they have English knowledge. They prefer to have, read in uh, English newspapers rather than the uh, regional language content. Okay, the people who are not ha having English knowledge are tend to have a lesser economic affluence. So they are less economically affluent means they may not be able to afford the technology. So there's a mismatch of the content creation in regional languages, content, content consumed by uh, people from the regional language perspective. Okay. So, but now it's just catching up. Now it's just catching up, uh, particularly online platform. Uh, for example, if you go to Facebook or Twitter, if the post, the message comes from whatever language, you can translate. The Google uh, and other platform, they started a trans online translation tool. So one of the very effective tool and uh, that helps the uh, uh, reducing the language barrier. There are many websites, many apps are available, real time translation. For example, if you have a mobile app, a particular app and you're going to a country where you may not be able to understand the language, but you can fine tune the app saying that the uh, one Japanese to uh, Indian language or Indian language to Japanese. Real time, if I, if I speak in Indian language, you know Japanese or whatever language available in the app, whatever I'm speaking in Indian language, that can translate it into Indian language immediately. Right? There are plenty of tools that are available. So this, uh, the language barrier and through technological development algorithm, and this, the barrier is going down. So it gives a lot of diversity. And many people with uh, their own ideas, they can participate here. Yeah, it was English is the only possible way, but now uh, you can communicate to me in your, in your language, but I'll be able to understand your language through the appropriate interface. Similarly, I can talk to you in my mother tongue. You can understand my mother tongue through appropriate transla translations. So that's the beauty of uh, online platform. And uh, we are so far, we talked about a very positive aspect of online, but there is an other side of online. That's uh, cybercrime, security, privacy, surveillance, online hate, misinformation, disinformation, malware, and uh, hacking, and uh, uh, spying, and trolling. There are many things are happening in online. There is a, uh, this is a challenge for the regulatory body, government, national, international level, to make this platform more secure. And nowadays, the passwords are more uh, stringent. You need to have capital letters, small letters, special characters, numbers. So that too frequently you have to change. This is the biggest challenge for individuals to maintain the passwords. Reason is the security reasons. The people are misusing the opportunity to uh, manipulate the individuals for the business, for monetary benefits or economic benefits, or political mileages, whatever, 
Cambridge Analytica, you might have heard about that there. They deliberately uh, misuse their uh, use the social media platform to influence the opinion. Big companies are involved. Governments are involved in that process. So that also happening there. So positive, negative aspect of that is being discussed in this uh, unit one, unit two, and uh, the third unit is about uh, issues of access and participation. I was talking about this coaxial cable, fiber optic, uh, one image uh, takes 35 minutes and all, and the teletensity of uh, rural, urban, developing countries and developing countries, all this part here, uh, part in, of this unit. But I would like to give one important information about a digital divide. Digital divide is a little older concept. Uh, digital divide is the simplest uh, uh, definition of digital divide is haves and have nots. Uh, haves means uh, those are having a computer, internet connections, able to participate in a Google Meet. And have not is go those can't afford to have a computer, or if they have a computer, no need, no possible of uh, internet, so not able to participate in a Google Meet. So this is simplest definition of digital divide. But that uh, concept got changed because of a mobile, uh, because of mobile uh, data plan and everything. The divide, digital divide, is gone. Rather now we are, we are talking more about digital inequality. Digital inequality means you are having a computer, laptop, or tab, or mobile apps, and internet connections. Similarly, I may have a laptop, mobile, and internet connections. But do you think that your connections, your gadgets, and my connections, my gadgets are perfectly matching? May not. I might be inferior. My internet may be a little slower. I may have an older system. I, my system may not uh, read the uh, non-English content. Okay, might be very slow, right? Or maybe my network may, be, may not be strong. Or I may have everything, but I may not be able to communicate with you. I may not be able to make proper PowerPoint presentations. Okay, PowerPoint presentation may not be possible. Or I may not be able to speak in English. Or I may not be able to speak uh, in that the, the, the nature that in which others can understand that or I may not be able to find the information through Google. So here in the technology is available, but beyond that, there's a, there is an issue of skill and competency. Here everything needs certain kind of understanding. If I want to join Google Meet, I need to know how to join the Google Meet. Whether the link is being given, if link is not given, what is the code? If I connect it to the Google Meet, how do I operate the uh, mobile uh, camera and mic? Other than that, how do I share the screen? Right? If I share the screen, how do I see the other people and not? So here, everything needs based on my understanding or your, your understanding. So skill and competency is required. Skill and competency of internet, of technology, of ICT varies from individual to individuals. Someone may be very advanced level someone may be very basic level. This is how the inequality comes. Inequality in the sense that this is a difference in terms of accessing, understanding, participating in the online platform. And inequality could be various reasons, for economic reasons, for education reasons, age reason, or gender, or locations. There are many reasons for that. Okay, So that is a, the important point of this particular unit, uh, unit number four. Unit number three, okay. The last one of this block, uh, block one is uh, policy framework and guidelines. I was talking about the negative aspect of uh, internet, where uh, the uh, governments and the international bodies are finding difficulty to, to regulate this uh, platform, online platform. There is an international telecom union. There is a ICANN. ICANN is an international agency that uh, allocates the domain names .com, .org, or uh, .net, .co, .in, or .nl. So whatever the domain names are controlled by ICANN. 
that's an autonomous body and uh, operates from American uh, uh, place. Okay. And uh, uh, this is one how government can control the online. The reason is here the internet is not a, uh, very specific to one country, it's a global platform. Multiple players are involved. My, you are one, I'm communicating from India to Africa. Similarly, there are many things happen from intercontinental level, and who will responsible to control the, all, the, all this point? Okay, so uh, this is a challenge in terms of internet governance. So internet governance is a, a very serious matter because every agency, either internet service provider or government or websites that provide services wants to make sure that the whole visit their site are feel secure secure connections they are getting information properly and adequately they are addressed and they are not being misused so this is the biggest challenge and every government and they wanted to make uh, uh, this uh, platform more secure more affordable and this is one of the guideline uh, goal of sustainable development goals to facilitate internet at affordable cost. Okay, so that's the one. And uh, even sustainable development goals, uh, reiterating that the uh, the technology should be used to empower the individuals for the health, for the education, for the equality, for environment, for the water usage, for freedom of expression, for everything. That. Specifically, the goal number five talking about empowerment of women to reduce the inequality now, right? So these are the challenges uh, of internet. So if you look at this first blog and uh, this platform, uh, online platform, giving a very interesting uh, outlook. Uh, outlook in the sense. Okay, yeah. So this is a block one, a very interesting one. Starting with the uh, internet as a medium, how medium got evolved, what are the differences, and how uh, it, we can differentiate between normal medium and online platform. In the online platform, what are the different communication patterns that are available? And what are the interaction between this medium and society, and how this medium can be used? What are the positive and negative aspect of this platform? And since it's a technology-based uh, platform, what are the challenges for individuals to participate, to access the platform? Equality, divide, we were talking about that. Since it's a global platform, any individuals can operate, institutions can operate, companies can operate, governments can operate, and this platform needs to provide in a very secure manner. Okay, so that is the challenge of uh, government bodies and the regulatory bodies to make this platform more secure. Okay, so these are the issues we discussed in a block one of MJM 28. Right, so with this, I stop the presentation for block one now. If you have any questions, anything you can ask me that. Hope it's uh, understandable to everyone about the uh, MJM 28. This is, see, hope everything you must be using the, at least uh, for next couple of minutes, tell me the, the you are uh, interaction with the medium. What are the challenges you are facing with the internet in your country or in your city? For one minute at least. What are the challenges you are facing with this platform? Whether the internet is available, if it's available, how far you can access it, whether you're accessing from home or from office, is it very expensive or not? How, how you are, how, what is your experience with the internet? Hello? Yes, Simon. Yes, for me, I am I'm here in India, I'm in Trivandrum. So, uh, my experience, uh, I think with the internet has been, there's good internet general here okay. when i compare I, when i compare with uh, back home in malawi mm -hmm. uh, the internet here is faster 
and mm. far much cheaper, very cheap when I compare with my country. Here it's very cheap. You are currently uh, in Trivandrum? Yes, I'm in Trivandrum now. I'll be okay. going back to Malawi, I think, uh, in a few weeks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you mean to say that the internet in here is very cheaper? Yes, in India too. Yes, compared to Malawi. Okay. It's extremely cheap. Yes. Uh, yeah. So how expensive um, in your country, the internet? Oh, well, I think, uh, I'm not sure now. I think Gondo would tell me how much one, G, uh, one gigabyte of internet will cost. But when I was living, mm -hmm. I think that, oh, that must have been over, over a, a thousand rupee maybe. Oh, That's one GB. GB. Yes, that must have been over a thousand rupees. So this and very in expensive. India, uh, for example, thousand rupees for others, I can translate into close to uh, thirteen or fourteen dollars US dollars. Okay, and one GB. For example, in uh, he's talking about it, one GB cost uh, fourteen dollars US dollars in his one hometown, but whereas in India, one GB costs less than one dollar, right, Simon? Yes, yeah, w less than one dollar. I think uh, in rupees. Uh, uh, forgot, but it's quite cheap, quite cheap. Right. Yeah. yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, what quite interesting. Yeah, others are uh, trans uh, communicating through a uh, message saying that uh, my city mainly it is a slowness of internet. Okay, and uh, slow reason is uh, from your side or the service provider's side? One way, yes, come on. Uh Hello? Yeah, you said the internet is very slow in your side. Is it because of uh, uh, the slowness through your system is slow, your computer is slow, or the net? Mainly, mainly, mainly is the service provider. Okay. Uh, we only have um, uh, less than five of them, I should okay. say. Now, why they are providing yeah. slow internet? What is the reason for that? Uh, they don't have competition, basically. You don't no, have for example, you may have mobile, right? Mm -hmm. And when you call uh, someone in through video, whether it's become very slow. Mainly, the service providers uh, in my country, uh -huh. they are not as uh, they are some in. The, if I would compare with the other countries, the way we hear from other countries to say service providers sometimes they okay. are accountable on what yeah. they are offering to uh, their uh, clients and maybe subscribers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, here, here in Malawi, mm -hmm. um, of, of course, the, the uh, consumers, we have uh, the rather dormant uh, mm -hmm. co consumers okay. who do not actually uh, want to maybe demand what they are required to be given from the service providers. So maybe they take advantage of that. OK. So mm -hmm. another uh, response from uh, Tiangwe. She's in Malawi. She's saying that the internet is very expensive. And sometimes yes, it's very erratic and uh, slow. Yeah. Me, Tiwonge, and of course, it's Simon, we Same. are all from Malawi. So uh -huh. what Simon is saying is quite true. And what Tiwonge is saying is also quite true. <laughs> yes. Right, OK. And Emmanuel says here in Ghana, internet is very expensive, speed is slow. And uh, funny enough, when it rains, internet connection can go off like two days sometimes. This is uh, from the network providers. And we don't have enough competition here also. Okay. Iliani says uh, in Uganda, internet is very expensive, internet is expensive as well as in most poor uh, network connections. And um, Probably uh, not now. And uh, next class, when we meet next, uh, maybe tomorrow, today, Saturday, tomorrow we are meeting, right? When we meet again tomorrow, can you give me one information about, you are saying expensive, expensive, right? How expensive is it? I don't know to give you an answer now, right? Uh, for example, in your country, to access internet connections, how much you need to pay? Okay, just to give the information tomorrow when we meet, right? Just I want to understand that when you are saying expensive, we need to understand how much expensive is it, right? 
largely is expensive why it's very expensive and we need to understand that so just give me the information tomorrow not today right so quite interesting and uh, you want to know because uh, this it helps me to understand and uh, it helps me you to understand both of us can understand scenario here i'll give my scenario and you give your scenario tomorrow when we start tomorrow five o'clock we'll start with this comparison then we'll move on to social media tomorrow block two we will cover the entire interesting aspect of social media all right okay thanks and uh, taking our time out and uh, joining here for one and a half hours for this meeting right great thank you sir yeah sir. Yeah. Uh, I have got a few questions, general questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of us, like me, I, I, I am taking a PG dip, uh, diploma. So I wanted to ask if uh, we will be required to continue with classes for year two. Uh, see, in the university, uh, there is a provision of uh, joining MA second year with your diploma. Right. And uh, I'm not sure whether you have opted that scheme or not. What you can do, you send me a mail. I'll convey to the concerned department to check whether they can go to second year automatically. Because here, since you are in the fellowship, you don't have to pay money. And uh, this can be, uh, university can facilitate it. For example, all the people who are in MA, and they are moved to our second year automatically without paying any money. Because since they are in the fellowship scheme. Okay. Uh, okay. Send me a mail. I'll check it with the concerned department. Okay, great. Uh, and and secondly, uh, I, last time for us who were unable to submit assignments, uh, yeah. you said the link would be reactivated later. I don't know when that will be. Right. No problem. Because somebody else also asked about assignment. I'll do one thing. I uh, will uh, check it on Monday about your uh, LMS account for all the students about for the first year as well as for oh, first year only because second year. Uh, second year, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, both the first year and second year assignments are activated or not. I'll check it because I, I guess it's activated. In case not activated, I'll do it. But still, you have time. October 30th is a deadline to submit your assignments. Okay. I'll definitely get back to you on Monday, Tuesday. Okay, fine. If it is not active, I'll activate it. If it is activate, I'll activate activated, then I'll inform you all about that's available or not. Okay. Oh, okay, fine. And and finally, finally, I I I I think I sent a request to, to join the group. I lost my Malawi number, so I have a Indian number on Telegram. One minute, I'll do it now. It's because uh, overseas there is a one person, Simon. Yeah. Yes. Connected. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. So we'll meet tomorrow, five o'clock Indian Standard Time. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Bye.